Good morning guys, I am Francis, your clinical instructor for today. I will be demonstrating assisting in ambulation without aid. Number one, reviews medical record for the patient's uh, most recent uh, activity experience and records weight. This is done to be able to identify and assess the status of the patient. Medical record of the patient shows that the patient was able to tolerate a recent activity Current weight of the patient is around 40 kilograms. Number two, review medical record uh, for history or risk of orthostatic hypotension. This is done to be able to identify the patient's limitation during ambulation for patient safety. Medical history of the patient shows uh, right-sided weakness with no uh, signs of hypertension. Number three, reviews healthcare provider's order for activity note mobility or weight bearing restrictions this is done to be able to identify and verify the doctor's order and also uh, identify any special consideration when assisting the patient patient's chart shows doctor's order uh, to ambulate patient once a day preferably in the morning a patient is able to move both uh, lower extremities with uh, considerations of uh, weak-sided uh, weakness of the right uh, lower leg. Number four, determines uh, best time to ambulate and schedules around other activities. This is done to maximize the energy of the patient and also gives time uh, for the patient to rest for other activities. As per doctor's order, Best time to ambulate the patient is at the morning after breakfast, after the patient has eaten, so the patient has energy to, to move and ambulate and has uh, time to rest for the following activities. Number five, check the patient's environment for barriers or safety risk. This is done to, prov uh, to provide safety for the patient and prevent any injury. Patient's environment has no barriers or any safety risk. It is safe to proceed to ambulation. Number six, identifies patient using at least two modifiers. Uh, it can be the name and the birthday of the patient. This allows you to verify if you have the correct patient. Sir, good morning. What's your pangalan, sir? Hi, Clinton. Uh, birthday nato, sir? December 27, 2005. Okay, correct. Number seven, perform sand hygiene. This is done to prevent the spread of microorganisms. Number eight, assess patient readiness to ambulate. First, you have to assess baseline vitals. This will serve as your basis or baseline data of the status of the patient. So you have to check for your blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and temperature. Sir, magkuha po vital signs, sir, ha? Kapit na to, sir. Next, assess uh, patient's range of motion and strength of the lower extremities in bed if necessary. This allows you to identify and assess the patient's capability and limitations. Also, it helps you assess any weak side of the patient. Sir, ma sa ka ni Okay, very good. Can you isa, sir? Okay, medyo hinay, no? Ipiko daw ni, sir. Okay. Can you isa? Okay. Uh, Iliho ang tiil, sir, ka na. Ang ankel. Okay, kapikas. Magbutang ko pressure, sir, at isa ka ang tail. Sige daw, sir. Okay, ang isa. Okay, so we noticed that the patient has a limited range of motion in the left, uh, in the right, uh, lower extremities, and uh, there is weakness. Next, ask if the patient is tired or experiencing any pain. Uh, assess uh, the source of pain and the severity of pain and provide analgesic if needed. This is done to be able to promote comfort for the patient. 
Sir, nag-gika po yung baka sir, karon? Wala na. Nakakay na feel nga sakit sa imang bill? Wala pa. Okay. Number nine. Assess the patient's level of response to command and views uh, regarding health and willingness to participate. This is done to assess the level of cooperation from the patient. Sir, na ako yung mga isugo sa imo ha, sa atong procedure. Okay lang ba sa imo ha? Okay lang. Uh, sir, willing ba ba ka mo, mo participate sa ato ang exercise na mo bangon ta tapos magbaktas baktas na gamay? Number 10. Assess the patient for any deficit that may affect his or her ability to follow instructions. This is done to assess again the level of cooperation from the patient. Sir, makadungog man ta sir no? Okay, para importante magud ni siya sir para pag maghatag og instruction, kaya nimo musunod sa akong mga commands. Wala may problema na no? Okay. Number 11. Place a chair or wheelchair nearby if necessary. This is done for the patient if ambulation is not tolerated. Number 12. Explain to the patient how to prepare for the ambulation and explain to the patient the benefits of the activity. Also, consider the, the values uh, and the concerns of the patient regarding his health. Educating the patient uh, and considering his values and beliefs regarding his health is important to be able to elicit cooperation from the patient. Number 13. Assist the patient from supine position to the side of the bed. Next, raise the head of the bed, place the bed in a low position, and place a non-skid footwear on the patient. This is done to provide safety and prevent injury. Elevate the head of the bed, lower the position of the bed, and uh, place non-skid uh, shoes uh, to the patient's feet. So, what is it? Next, stand on the appropriate side of the bed and turn the patient onto the side facing, uh, facing self. This is done to facilitate the movement of the patient. Next, stand opposite the patient's hips and turn to face the patient and far corner of the bed. This prevents uh, twisting of the spinal column and reduces the, uh, the possibility of back strain or injury. Next, place feet in a wide base support to provide for balance and maintain the center of gravity. Next, places the arm under the patient's shoulder and place the other arm around the patient's thigh. This supports the patient during the movement. Sir, butang na pagong kamot sa ilalim sa imong shoulder, ha? Okay, tapos ang isa dria sa ilalim sa imong ha? Okay? Tapos, then, mag-shoot na po kayong kagbo. Next, move the patient's leg and feet to the side of the bed. Then, pivot weight. Okay, pivot weight to allow the upper leg of the patient to swing down. Then, elevate the upper leg the, the patient's trunk to upright position. This allows for a swift movement in changing positions. Sir, i-alsa ta ka sir ha, tapos akong muntil, akong pirahon pa baba. Number 14. Allow patient to sit for a few minutes. Flex and extend the patient's feet. Move the patient's feet up and down. Uh, this allows uh, for blood circulation. Uh, you can check blood pressure if necessary and then uh, allow the patient to breathe and relax for a moment if she feels dizzy or you can return the patient to bed if necessary. So, allowing the patient to rest allows uh, homeostasis in the body of the patient to be able to recover and to prevent orthostatic hypotension. Sir, uh, pwede ito ang pahuli sa takadiyot. 
maliyok ini eh, eh, maliyok pa niyo tayo sir sige liyok liyok kana stretching kana nanana sir ang intim okay sige mayo ah okay. uh, nalipong ba sir na na feeling ang nalipong wala man wala sige mayo number 15 applies gate belt appropriately and holds the belt properly once the patient stands this is done to provide support for the patient Sir, magtawad tao gate belt sir ah, uh, makatabang ni siya sa imuha para support sa imuha pag uh, indog na to niya, okay? Okay lang? Number 16, help patient to standing position with shoulders back, assess patient's ability to bear weight and balance. This is done, this is done to assess the capability of the patient to balance himself and to ambulate. Ito na huwag mong pamutulis sa likod ng sir, ha? Oh. Para support. Tapos so, imong kamot sir, ibutan sa ako ang likod. Okay, kaya na. Mayindog ka sir, ha? Sa count of three, sabay tap. Ipirahon ka, tapos mayindog ka. Okay? One, two, three. Yan. Number 17. Return the patient to bed or chair immediately if the patient feels unsteady or obtain additional help. This is done to prevent injury to the patient and for safety Uh, for you and the patient. Number 18. Place an IV pole on the side of infusion and instruct the patient to push the pole while walking. This is done to provide additional support to the patient while walking. Sir, uh, can I IV stand sir? Uh, tabang ni sa imuha para support sa paglakaw ni mo. So, how it that is sir? Then, paglakaw ta, ato lang siyang isabay. Number 19, empties bag if necessary and ensures appropriate the handling of the bag and uh, make sure that there is no tension in the tubing. This allows for easier movement of the patient. Number 20, decide with the patient how far to ambulate. This is done to, to be able to collaborate with the patient and identify the limitation of the capability of the patient and also Uh, with this, you're you're able to provide safety for the patient. Sir, uh, gikabuy na ba ka or okay lang sa iyo mo padayon pa tawag lakaw? Okay pa ako padayon tag lakaw. Okay, sige. Number 21. Stand uh, on the appropriate side of the patient, slightly behind the patient. Usually, your positioning should be on the weak side of the patient. This is done to provide support for the patient without blocking the way of the patient. Okay. Number 22. Grasp, gate belt, and support the patient appropriately through his first few steps. This allows you to provide support for the patient and prevent the patient from falling. Number 23. Assess for strength and balance before continuing. This is important to assess the capability of the patient, his current status, in order for you to decide to continue or to stop the ambulation. Number 24. Position the patient between self and wall and encourage the use of uh, handrails. This is done to be able to provide support for the patient while walking and also to provide safety and ensure that the patient is safe and prevent injury. Sir, okay lang man ang ano no, ang pill uh, di man luya. Nya yeah, okay lang ang balance. Di pa ka medyo lipong. Yeah. Number 25. Observe how the patient walks and evaluate the tolerance to activity. This allows you to be able to evaluate the current status of the patient. Number 26. Reacts if the patient starts to fall. First, you have to secure the gate belt or grasp the gate belt with both hands. This is done to secure the patient. Next, stand with uh, both feet apart for support. This allows you to have a wide base and to be able to maintain that center of gravity uh, when the, the patient falls. Next, 
pull patient against self, then slowly uh, slide the patient down from the leg to the floor, and do not uh, risk personal injury. This is done to prevent uh, injury for the patient and also to yourself. Next, bend your knees and lower your body along with the patient. This is done to be able to guide the patient down and also for you to be able to prevent back strains and injuries. Next, stay with the patient until help arrives. Make sure to provide the patient with comfort as much as possible and a safe environment. Number 27, return the patient uh, in a comfortable position to the bed or chair and then perform hand hygiene. This is to promote comfort for the patient and then uh, preventing the spread of microorganisms. Last time, sir. Hold the ball. Okay. Number 28. Record the time and distance ambulated. Also, record any changes in vital signs and record if the patient tolerated the activity. Uh, place your record on the patient's chart. This is done to be able to accurately and properly document uh, any information and also document the the implementation that you have done uh, for the patient recording ambulation time uh, 7 a.m. no changes in vital signs noted uh, patient was able to tolerate the uh, ambulation <laughs> 